Hey guys, hey there and welcome back, I'm Sim UK. This is Tin Can, a fantastic game from William Burke and uh, the team that he works with. This is a fantastic space simulation-esque type game. Basically what they've done is they've taken something as complex as rocket science and they've simplified it in a way that makes it accessible and engaging for anyone to play. Now, they've done that very cleverly so it's done in a way that it still feels highly technical and highly simulated, even though really and truly it's very simplified and dumbed down. But it never feels like it is. It feels like you're effectively um, short-circuiting a space rocket in order to survive. It's very, very clever. And having spoken to the devs on their Discord... The things that they're planning for the future um, make this one of the most exciting space simulation-esque puzzle survival games that I've ever seen. It's easy to get immersed in this game. It's so exciting. But it's one of those very difficult games as well. There's a hardcore mode which I'm going to play today. And basically, I'm just going to try and survive as long as I can. I think the longest I've survived in my sort of practice runs is 30 minutes. So if I can do anything around 20 minutes, then I think I've done a good job. Let's jump in and, uh, and, and do this. So you've probably seen this, vi this game already. This probably isn't new to you. You know, we're a very small channel. We don't get sent stuff until months after the big channels get it. So... You know, that that aside, this I think this is absolutely fantastic. So if you're one of the fortunate few who haven't seen this game already, then congrats to you, because you're going to see something spectacular today. I'm not sure why the leaderboard for hardcore isn't working. I am playing on beta. Uh, I think it says somewhere. Beta? I don't know. Yes, I think that's it. Work in progress beta. But there's a lot of stuff planned for this game in the future. It's definitely one to jump on now and keep your eye on in the future. And it's so cheap as well. Like 10 quid, 11 quid, something like that. Brilliant game. I love it. So we're basically just being jettisoned from a big spaceship. And all we've got with us is this book. The technical book. And this tells us how all the systems work so we've got like the vital systems here this is the only thing in the ship that can't break i think and uh in addition to that we've got atomic pile temperature indicators basically we've got like a nuclear fusion system in the middle that um allows us to heat and power everything oh hang on found some keys to my mouse but I've got to run Logitech G Hub in order for that to work. Collision alert! So this is basically what we're going to be uh, dealing with. Like uh, supernatural events. You can see we're going through some rocks and stuff. And you can see that massive, massive, massive asteroid looking thing there. Uh, yeah, we're going to hit these. Not that one. But we're gonna hit we're gonna hit one and every time we hit something stuff breaks oh she's scabang like that exactly like that so we've got uh, an oxygen generator we've got a carbon dioxide scrubber and uh it's gonna clean the filter real quick it's a bad filter rather than dirty filter great so over, oh my word over here we've got like a repair station and this is where we take parts that are damaged, like this air filter, put them in here and try and repair them. Now, the only way that we can do that is by stripping down parts in the space. I'm just holding on to this so I don't fly about the spaceship for a while. Or the tin can, as it's affectionately known. You've also got a genity uh, graviator. <laughs> I've just entertained myself. A gravity generator, which is this thing here. You can see we've got 1G at the moment allows us to walk around freely but that's one of the things that breaks very often empty bottle oh crap right so we have to replace the gravity okay. that's that working low pump full can 
So uh, basically we suck the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere using this device here and then that converts the CO2 and then this one sorry converts CO2 to uh, oxygen and that's not working. Why for you not working? Okay, we're not going to last very long if that's not working. Have they put the drawers in yet? No, not yet. These are going to be storage drawers, so you can put parts in and, and do stuff. So, um, I recommend you turn the power off, the lights, because, well... You don't really need the lights. And uh, I have asked that when you uh, dismantle parts that they disappear because it gets very messy in here otherwise. You can see you can pull out all the components and, and stuff. And you literally have no spare parts anywhere. Absolutely nothing at all. So you, it is a case of robbing Peter to pay Paul. Right, so I'm going to try and fix this filter. It's going to cost me 32, 32 points to do that. That's epically bad. As soon as this is broken immediately, I kind of need to deal with it. Oh, shoot. There's all different things that can happen. We can pass close to a star or a sun. Uh, and the whole ship heats up and we have all sorts of problems. All sorts of different events that can cause things to break in the shuttle. This is so not working. Okay, well we're completely screwed. So we're not going to last very long at all because we're going to run out of oxygen very quickly. This is uh, like the, uh, the sealed lock. Of the capsule and um, this is how cool this game is right if you want you can just open this not a good idea obviously okay we're going to reseal that so the pod is now low in oxygen no no we're good we're good yeah we're good I only opened it for a second. Don't freak out, machine. All under control. Right, so I've cleaned this filter. And that should be working now. There you go. The error list is now down to zero. So that's back up and running. But we're very low on parts. And the parts I put here have... Oh, thank God. For a second, I thought they had flown... They've flown out the door, haven't they? Oh, no. All I've got are the broken parts. So the two good parts that we had, the spare fuse and power connector, I think they have, when I open the door, just for a brief second, they got sucked out into space. Oh no, there's one. There's the power connector. There's the manual, that's quite important. <laughs> we need that quite a bit. So you've got a battery fast charger here. Um, and obviously all of these systems, if I open this up, all of these systems have like a battery in case the power goes out, which happens quite often. We've got a little computer over here showing us what systems are online and what systems are not online. It's very good. Really, really good game. Uh, I like it a lot. This is the temperature management. Uh, basically there's a, there's a tin of liquid nitrogen there, which is keeping the place cool. And obviously this is a nuclear reactor and if you know anything about nuclear reactors uh, you know a radiation <clears throat> I think this is going to become something in the future as it says in the book don't try and dismantle unless you've got specialist tools uh, risk of severe radiation poisoning in the atomic if the atomic pile is handled without proper safety equipment right so you can see that the external temperature is rising and uh, that's because we're passing close to a sun. But this is, uh, this is uh, a very tricky one. Uh, I died the first time I experienced this, of um, 
hypothermia. Basically, you got got too hot. But uh, I misread it as hyperthermia, and then contacted the devs to say, "Oh, I think you've got a bug here. It was really hot outside. I turned off this um, atomic generator so that the temperature didn't get too hot in here, and then I died of hypothermia. But I didn't. I died of hypothermia. It got too hot." And the reason why that happened was because the readout on here, you can see the temperature's going up now, it's starting to go red, so I'm going to have to shut the power off, which is very scary. You can see we're just passing the sun now. And the reason why I died was because this was fluctuating from 28 degrees C to 50 degrees C and all over the place, and basically this little data cable here, the data connector, had failed, although I didn't realise it had failed. So the temperature was probably twice what it was telling me it was, uh, and that's why I died of hypothermia. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's how... That, this is what I mean about how it's really simplified and dumbed down so anyone can play it, but it's still hyper-realistic, and, and um, it just... it's brilliant. I love it. It's great. It's a real challenge. It's getting jolly toasty in here, 29 degrees C. Very nice it is too. I don't think you can see the sun. You can see all the light. Oh, there it is. Yeah, look at that. Wow. Well, we've managed nine minutes, almost ten minutes. What's, what's the alarm? Yeah, we know. Flipping up. Suntan factor lotion, seven million required. Doesn't that look great? And that's the oxygen gone off. No, not the oxygen, sorry, that's the, uh, the gravity gone off. So trying to move around in zero gravity is like nigh on impossible, but if you just grab hold of one of these handles, it's a lot easier. Right, let's get the power back on. Everything is running on batteries right now. Well, this has not come back on. Oh, crap in hell. Come on, we need you to start up. There we go. Goodness for that. All right, don't panic. Temperature's coming down, but unfortunately, it looks like yeah we're out of oxygen, massively out of oxygen. Oh, we got loads of errors. Basically fried the place. Now this is not. Oh, no, this is not working at all. Oh, it is a little bit. We've got a little bit of oxygen. In. where we're going to die. So the CO2 transfer thingy is just happening so slowly. It normally happens much, 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 much quicker than that. Empty bottle. That's it, we're screwed. I think that's possibly a bug. Possibly. I say possibly a bug because this game is so hard. I don't think there's anything in the CO2 transfer thing that's broken. And it appears to say that it's online. The CO2 scrubber is online. And what's supposed to happen is the CO2 is supposed to drop and the oxygen is supposed to go up. But it doesn't seem to be working for whatever reason. Turn it off, turn it back on again. Definitely getting no oxygen. So we're pretty much screwed, guys. That's, that's going to be the end of, uh, of this particular Let's Play. But hopefully I've shown you enough of the game to, in, to whet your appetite. And if you head over to their Discord, you can see all the fantastic things that they're planning on doing with this game. Let me just... I can't 
coughing, shutting his off. But uh, yeah, it's just a matter of time till we die. Got another alarm going off somewhere. So uh, yeah, it's a shame. It's a shame that I can't show you any more than that. But we were doing, we were actually doing really, really quite well. But uh, I can't seem to transfer CO2 into oxygen at the moment. And uh, I am running the beta, and the beta is where all the broken stuff is meant to be. So it's not not an issue with the game, and it wasn't broken like this before. But as they bring stuff in, um, that's kind of what happens, basically. And you can see that this is all busted now. The batteries run low. Uh, we're not producing a lot of oxygen because the pump is broken. I take this out. Ah, there you go. 13 minutes and 34 seconds. Hypoxia. Too much CO2 or not enough O2. But what a fantastic game this is. It's only like 10 quid uh, on Steam. I highly recommend you go and check it out. It's a lot of fun. It's a real challenge. And uh, it gets far more, far more complicated than what I managed to show you today. But whilst the oxygen and CO2 is not working, there's very little I can do. So, uh... Ugh! Frustrating, but at the same time, uh, just a brilliant game. And I like it so much that even if it runs into little bugs like this during the beta, I don't see it as any kind of problem. This game is absolutely faultless. And if I turn the beta off and went back to the main game, I know it's absolutely solid because I've played it before. And um, yeah, they're working on in introducing so many great things that I really don't feel concerned in any way that the beta is not working at the moment not having oxygen is quite a big problem so uh one hour and 11 minutes 22 seconds that is the longest anybody has managed to play this game before they died pretty cool and they're they're implementing a system whereby um if you la survive long enough that you actually get rescued so uh, that would be interesting to see, and I'm not sure how long you're supposed to play it to get rescued. But there's, a, there's a whole load of other things. They're looking at how they can allow you to go outside of the ship to repair things, solar panels, a whole bunch of stuff. I even suggested, because we've got some beds there, it would be great if you had to make some food and sleep and rest and do all that kind of stuff. And obviously if you go to sleep and then the alarms go off, you get woken up. And if that happens too many times, then you you, uh, you get sleep deprivation. It's a game with huge possibilities, and it's it's brilliant already. So uh, yeah, go check it out. Let me know what you think in the comments, guys. And uh, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Take care. Goodbye for now.